Hi! This will be a short video demonstrating the convolution reverb unit that I recently built in Super Collider. I will not be so bold as to attempt to explain what convolution is, much less any of the other really cool and interesting things you can do with convolution or with Fourier transforms more generally. Perhaps in a future video I will scratch more of that surface. For now though, I'm going to limit myself to providing a brief user's guide to the reverb unit I've built and I'll proceed on the assumption that you have at least a basic grasp of Super Collider, what it is, how it works, and at least a basic idea about concepts such as impulse responses and signal routing. I've tried to make this uh, unit user-friendly and robust, that is, unlikely to crash or fail, but I'll be honest, it's not perfect, and as such, I'll point out some of the potential pitfalls in using it as we go along. And of course, the code is free and open source, so anyone who has it, it's free to tweak it as they like. But even as it stands, this is an invaluable tool to have in putting together a home electronic music studio, providing a rich alternative to Freeverb, Gverb, and some of the other free digital reverb simulating plugins that are out there. So let's get started. To run the code, select line 4 and hit command return. This does two things. It boots Super Collider's audio server, and once the server is booted, it generates the following GUI. Ta-da! The elements on this GUI are pixel-specific, meaning that they may not be optimally visible on all screen resolutions. The re resolution on my machine here is 1440 by 900, and as you can see, the GUI looks great. To start, getting some sound out of the unit, the first thing we'll need to do is select an impulse response. I assume that someone using this unit will have a folder somewhere on their machine containing impulse responses. The directory is typed into this text box, which for me would be users slash Kyle Shaw slash composition slash supercollider slash IRs slash I hand selected a few of them and put them in a folder called good ones. Hit enter and then a list of the impulse responses found in that folder appears in the window below. Super Collider reach, reads each one into a buffer, allowing the user to switch between impulse responses at the click of a mouse, rather than having to browse for a new file each time they wanted to use a different impulse response. Typing out the path to your impulse response directory can be tedious, especially if it's buried within several levels of folders and subfolders. Fortunately, if you didn't already know this, Super Collider has this handy feature of allowing you to drag a folder from the Finder window into the text window of Super Collider. And this generates a string indicating the path to the corresponding folder. The user can then copy and paste that path name minus the accompanying quotation marks and put that in the text box, which we've already done. We get the same result without having to type out a long path at the risk of introducing typos, which of course would confuse Super Collider and frustrate you, the user. By default, no impulse response is selected when the list of files first appears in the GUI window. As you can see, we can turn on the reverb unit, and Super Collider will complain to us in the post window that it doesn't have the FFT data that it needs. So we need to click on a file in the GUI window so that Super Collider can run an FFT on this impulse response to get the spectral data it needs to execute the convolution. Next we'll need to select an audio source to process. By default, the code loads into buffers the two audio files that come with the Super Collider application and are used in many of its help files for demonstration purposes. This drop-down menu allows the user to specify either a mono, stereo, or live input as the source type. So we can, for instance, select mono, select an impulse response, say the racquetball court, turn on the reverb unit, set the fader levels, and then hit play on the audio source strip.
So there you have it. That was just the reverberated sound, but you can also specify whether or not to include the dry signal into the mix by clicking on this toggle button. Notice too that I've included a high pass and a low pass filter on the reverb strip so that the user can finesse the reverb as she or he sees fit. That's all fine and good for testing and demonstration purposes, but you probably don't want to reverberate the sound of a toddler saying, Columbia, this is Houston, over. So, as with the impulse responses, you can type in the path to a directory of your own sound files here. And, as with the impulse responses, you can drag that file from the finder window into the text window of Super Collider. We can just do this, copy and paste that string without the accompanying quotation marks into that text box, hit enter, and the list of sound files found appears there. And as with the impulse responses, while all of the sounds in the list have been read into buffers, by default no buffer is selected. So we need to click on the list to select a sound file to use. This brings us to another potential pitfall. I imagine that there's a small amount of latency when reading whole folders of sound files into buffers, both sound files to use as impulse responses and ones to be processed by the reverb unit. I'm probably not quick enough, but conceivably one could need to wait a second or two after asking Super Collider to load a large amount of sound files into buffers before they're ready to be used. Not only that, but now that we're going to switch from what I knew was a mono audio source to a stereo audio source, and really any time you switch between audio source, source types, whether that's stereo input or live input from the mic, I believe it's going to be best practice to turn everything off, then make the switch before turning the unit back on again. Like so. What this does is it ensures that all previously used synths are removed from Super Collider's server. Conceivably, these could pile up after a while and slow things down, and rapidly recalculating and swapping out FFT data, I imagine, could cause problems if done too quickly, or while a Convolver synth is already running on the server. These are issues that could be fixed by making a few tweaks in the code, but it's already functional enough for my own purposes that I don't have sufficient motivation to dive back into the code and make those changes. But you're welcome to. Now that we've turned off the unit, changed the source type to stereo, let's change the, I, the uh, impulse response, select an audio file for processing, adjust the filters on the reverb strip, set the fader levels, and let her fly. Well, that's great, but what if you wanted to record this, or in any other way have the output from the reverb unit communicate with other applications on your machine? As with most things, there are probably a number of ways to do this. Recording, for instance, could be done straight in Super Collider using s.prepare for record and s.start recording. But if you were working on a concrete piece, this would generate an audio file which you would then need to import into your DAW, which is an unnecessary step making the process more cumbersome and time consuming than it needs to be. So next I'll show you how to use Jack Router to connect Super Collider to other applications. In doing so, I'll show you specifically how to record the output of the reverb unit straight into a DAW and how to send the audio output from another application to the reverb unit for processing. Jack Router is of course one of the trophies of the free and open source software community and can be found at jackaudio.org. In order to get Super Collider to uh, communicate with Jack Router, we first have to launch the Jack Pilot. We would click on Start to initiate the Jack Pilot audio server, which I've already done. Next, in Super Collider, by evaluating the top line of code, 
We specify that Jack Router is to be the output device for Super Collider, and at this point we would need to reboot the Super Collider audio server, and we can verify in the post window that Jack Router is the output device that Super Collider will be sending to. Next, we can open up a DAW. I've got Arter here on my machine, so this will process will look a little bit different in different applications, but conceptually, it will be the same. I've got an audio track set up already. Now, in the mixer window, we need to specify Super Collider as the input source for this audio track. By clicking on the other tab, you can see that SC Synth is listed as an option. So we will enable both channels. So this audio track is now listening to the sound coming from the Super Collider audio server. We record enable the track. Set up our reverb unit. And we start recording. Let her fly. So there you have it. That definitely expands the usefulness of this tool, but let's say you were working on a multi-component musical element in the DAW already and you wanted to add reverb to that. Well, that's what we'll look at next. Here I have a simple gesture combining elements from multiple tracks in Ardor. I've already started the jack pilot, so now I can specify with these two lines of code Jack router as the input device and output device for the Super Collider server to listen to. Uh, and then I would need to reboot the server as necessary, which I've already done, and you can verify in the post window. Jack router is input and output device for Super Collider. Next, what we'll need to do is set the output for these three audio tracks to SC Synth. Audio track 3 is where we're going to re record the reverberated sound. So as before, we will set SC Synth as the input for that track, record enable that track, then we can select an impulse response and select live input as the audio source type on the reverb unit. By live input, this means whatever input source Super Collider is connected to when the server is booted, which by default on my machine is the built-in microphone. But we've just overridden this by specifying Jack Router as the input source for Super Collider to listen to. In either case, the user has to be wary of feedback. If we were using a microphone and sending Super Collider's output straight to the laptop speakers, well, that'd be a case where it'd be a better idea to wear headphones. But now that we have all that set up, we can turn the reverb unit on. And start recording. So that's that. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and send me a personal message if you'd like a copy of the code to play around with.